legislature, not the government, but in the hands of the terminally ill patient. Our Montana Supreme Court found that this medical decision does in fact fall within the ability of the terminally ill patient to control their own bodies at the end of their life. The right of the patient to make their own end of life medical decision is based on the simple premise that the people should be free. Specifically, when they're terminally ill, when death is near, they should be dis free to decide whether they want to prolong their suffering or whether they want to end it more quickly. The Montana Supreme Court recognized that the statute, the terminally ill statute, empowers patients to make their own decisions about their own end of life care, even when these decisions precipitate death. And it reflects a public policy that favors patient autonomy. And there's been some dispute. What was the effect of the Baxter decision? Well, it ensures that a physician who does honor the end of life medical decision of their patient has an absolute defense of consent. I believe the legislature should affirm this policy, should affirm the guidelines set forth by the court in Baxter and should not place undue obstacles in patients' way. The Montana Death with Dignity Act, Senate Bill 167, would affirm that physician participation is voluntary. It would enact protections from civil liability, criminal liability, and professional sanctions for these physicians who practice with, with, within the court's guidelines and honor the decisions of their terminally ill patients. The Montana Death with Dignity Act codifies the balance of the court's Baxter decision. It would enact protections for physicians who respect their patients' decisions, and it would establish additional safeguards beyond and above those that the court outlines. Now, the criminal laws of Montana will still apply if this law passes. It'll still apply in cases where they don't honor the will and the decisions of their patients. They'll still be prosecuted. And I think that's, that has to be the case because we need regulation of this procedure. And if, they, if doctors, if family members are acting beyond the text of this bill, if it were to pass, they will be prosecuted. The people of Montana strongly support the Baxter decision. I've heard this from folks in my district, elderly folks who want to have their own rights protected. Their own right to make their end of life decisions belongs to them in consultation with their doctor, not the state of Montana, not the legislature, not any organization or institution out there, but between them and their doctor. Most Montanans support choice at the end of life because they cherish freedom and autonomy. This is reflected by recent public polling, which shows 65% of Montanans believe that terminally ill patients should have the right to make their own end of life decisions. Who better to decide when the suffering stops than the terminally ill patient who's in the trenches going through this, fighting for their lives? They should be able to decide when that fight ends. The people of Montana yearn for freedom, not government intrusion. When they are dying of a, a terminal illness, they want the freedom to make their own end of life decisions. This morning, you're going to hear from a host of people on this bill. You're going to hear from doctors, patients, religious citizens, and other citizens who support the ability of terminally ill patients to make their end-of-life decisions. You're also going to hear a lot about the success of Oregon, and it has been a success. It's a success that's regulated. It's a success that is seldom used. But most importantly, it's a success that terminally ill patients know there's an option, there's an alternative to end their suffering. And most people don't use it, but it's comforting to them in their time of need, in their time of suffering, to know there is an alternative and that there is an end that they control. You'll hear from opponents who, who want to override this bill and void the court's decision and override the will of the people of Montana. They want to deny terminally ill patients the right to decide, and they want to decide when the suffering should stop. Opponents would have you believe that it is the role of the state of Montana to decide when cancer patients are allowed to die. 
And their arguments rely mainly upon fear that this policy will be abused. But the statistics just aren't there to back it up. In Oregon, there has not been one instance of abuse. And the same goes for Washington. We have our own rights to the Terminally Ill Act right here in Montana. We haven't had any abuse. Doctors aren't pulling the plug from people withdrawing life-sustaining treatments. Greedy heirs aren't getting in the way, pulling the plug on their loved ones. Folks, the current regulations in Montana, in Oregon, in Washington, they work. They work because we trust doctors. We have a rule of law. And if people are abusing the law, they get prosecuted. That's going to remain the same if this bill passes. The Oregon experience has been studied more than any other end-of-life medical procedure in the world. And independent experts have found that this aid in dying policy works. And it has led institutions such as the American Public Health Association, the nation's largest and oldest association of public health officials dedicated to protecting the public's health, to endorse the procedure they have in Oregon. The Montana Death with Dignity Act will help improve end-of-life care in Montana. It will provide comfort, peace of mind, and control to those facing death from terminal illness. I hope you will join me and the majority of Montanans and, thousand, and nearly a thousand people who have actually passed out papers, signed those, sitting next to uh, Ms. Lane, which I forgot to bring up with me here today. Join all of us in supporting the right of terminally ill patients to make their own end-of-life decisions. This is about freedom, and we have the ability here today to honor that freedom and allow patients and their doctors to make these important decisions. Thank you. I urge due passage, and I reserve my right to close.